had a visit from one of the men who helped build it at the weekend. Half a century ago, Doug Sanford helped his father's firm plant the bridge in the rugged Mangapurua Valley, deep in what's now the Whanganui National Park. Arne Evans accompanied Mr Sanford on his sentimental journey. For Doug Sanford, the helicopter trip into the rain-sodden Mangapurua was easier at age 80 than the trip at age 28. Then it had been a 42-mile drive in from Ratihi, on a road whose constant landslips finally forced abandonment of the Mangapurua settlement. It's the heavy rain that had washouts and uh, slips, and you know, they were held caught in there sometimes for quite long periods. Then, deep among regrown bush, the half-century old bridge, looking as sturdy as the day it was opened. With Mr. Sanford came a copy of a photograph he took 52 years ago of his father and another man atop the wooden formwork which Doug himself had built. And when uh, they were, that was taken, the father and mother were camped just down here. They had about four tents. And uh, our son, who was about four then, came down and stayed with them for a while. What was your part in building the bridge? I was, uh, the first job I did was to uh, bend all the steel and that had to cut it all, it was in big long lengths. I cut it all with a hand hacksaw. Where'd you find the space to do this? Well, that's what amazes me, it was just there. Just was where all those pungas are? Yeah, now. just the side of it between the swing bridge, swing bridge and just there. By the time the bridge was finished in 1936, most of the settlers had given up on the valley, and the few remaining preferred driving to Ratahi to crossing the bridge simply to face a 65-mile boat trip downriver to Whanganui. At the time, Doug Sanford didn't realise he was building not a bridge, but a monument. 